Fix me! Ahoy toy! Welcome to Transfixed, the channel that has become uninhabitable after the YouTube Civil War. Tonight we're, tonight we're going to take a look at a custom project that I wanted to work on, and this is the beginning of it. So, I was watching GoBots because of my GoBotic tendencies returning from the last time I did that video. Now, I think the GoBots episodes aired out of order, but eventually, well into the series, we got um, an episode about the last engineer and the master renegade and i wanted to make customs of these characters after seeing them because they're very important all right so for this to make sense i gotta drop a bit of gobots lore on you here so you normies probably don't know this but uh, gobots used to be organic in fact they look just like humans there are go beings they're on the planet gobatron and they'd already split into their two factions so they had the heroic guardians and the renegades the renegades were founded by the master renegade who wanted to overthrow gobatron and ultimately, to do that, he routed an asteroid into Gobatron, rendering it uninhabitable. Um, the last engineer, he looks like this because he's replaced parts of his body with cybernetic prosthesis. And ultimately, he developed um, Gobot technology, which uh, he used to transfer the brains of everybody into these Gobot bodies so that they would survive. And then the war just continued on, and he was going to go off and find peace somewhere. And um, they both ended up in like suspended animation until these two episodes of the cartoon where they discovered um this is a bit of a spoiler in case you do want to watch it but um scooter and uh nick uh, accidentally discovered the uh, master renegade uh, thinking he was the last engineer and then they found the last engineer so uh then once they were back into play then uh uh, Cykel didn't really <laughs> care about him, but Master Renegade still had his loyal followers, which were the uh, the beastie uh, type of GoBots, right? Like Creepy and Pincher. Uh, the, the monster-like ones uh, followed him. Anyway, so upon int being introduced to those two characters, I thought, wow, it'd be cool to see them as an action figure. So I went online to look for custom action figures that people had made, and I actually couldn't find any. Uh, they may be out there, or maybe they uh, exist but haven't been you know, shared online, but I couldn't find any. So I thought, well then I may as well make one myself. I was tempted to do it right away, but I thought someone's surely already done this and done a better job and then I won't, I won't be tempted to do it, but not having found one, I thought I will do it. So uh, I was thinking, what do I want to use as uh, donor figures to make these customs? And um, obviously I settled on G.I. Joe, but uh, I was also thinking of other ideas like perhaps um, uh, the Jurassic World figures because I'd seen them in the stores and I noticed that the Owen figure kind of was dressed the same as the Master Renegade with the blue shirt and dark blue pants or blue jeans. But then looking closer, the buttons and collar and sleeves didn't quite match up. So I was thinking of other options like perhaps Lego. You know, the Lego minifigures, maybe I could customize those, but I couldn't really find the parts I needed. Um, the, the difficult thing was really the heads. But anyhow, I ended up settling back on G.I. Joe. So I went on uh, yojo.com and looked up uh, all the figures that would make good uh, parts for these. And this is what I ultimately settled on. So first of all, here's my recipe. You can see some of the figures I didn't pick out of this lineup, like uh, like the Sonic Fighter Psychout. I thought, this is great. He's got a helmet. He's got a, uh, a cover over one of his eyes. But um, th it's very frustrating with the last engineer because he's got this sort of metal dome on one quarter of his head. And then the eye is cyborgified on the other side. Uh, so I couldn't use the cyborg figure from DC either. Nothing really worked. So in the end, uh, the closest I could find was the head from Hot Seat. And this is the driver of this vehicle because I can't remember. Uh, now this figure I got cheap because uh, I only needed the head. He's got the wrong arms and obviously his thumbs are broken off, but that's okay. I just need the head and I'm gonna have to do some, some sculpting or something on there. And then uh, I'll use this helmet that's from the Battle Pack. That's the same helmet as the original figures like Duke and Short Fuse, the ones with the visors, right? So I'm just gonna cut this helmet in half, use part of that and try to accomplish the rest of his head that way. And then for the body, um, there's various G.I. Joes that have strapping over them, but I, it was actually kind of hard to find this sort of pattern that the uh, last engineer has. So I ended up with a Ricondo. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's kind of the closest one. And it has, um, you know, a pistol here, which the last engineer does not have, but that's okay. I can either remove this or paint over it or something. Uh, but I think that will be the closest match. And even the color, I probably won't have to do much painting on this piece. Uh, for the arms, I'm going to use the Bat or Battle Android Trooper for the left arm because, uh, Actually, he only has this forearm um, robotic, and that's okay because this part is smooth here, so I can actually just paint this flesh color, paint the sleeve here, and then he's got a, a nice robotic uh, forearm for his left. For the right, I don't have it yet. I'm going to probably use cesspool. Uh, I was also thinking I wanted to use overkill, but overkill is actually hard to find complete because he has a detachable right hand, which kind of drives up the price because it's easily lost. So. I'll either get Overkill or Cesspool, most likely Cesspool, whichever ends up being cheaper. I do have Overkill's legs, though, uh, because I need a robotic uh, left leg. And then for the right leg, 
I've got um, Colonel Courage. Now, G.I. Joe's, they do reuse a lot of parts. This is also the same leg that's on, I believe, Red Star and another figure, but I went with Colonel Courage because it was cheap. And this strap here kind of matches up with the hip straps and this hip, this waist piece rather, is from General Hawk, the uh, second version of Hawk. So I think that kind of goes together, the strapping on the, the chest and uh, the belts here, and this looks like it should kind of connect up reasonably enough there. And it also has the right kind of boots. Uh, the boots in the animation are about this height and uh, not very detailed, right? There's no laces or anything on the boots, so these Colonel Courage legs pretty well. And then for the Master Renegade, um, yeah, the hardest part was probably finding the head, otherwise it's not too hard. So this is, uh, <laughs> this is the Street Fighter Ken Masters figure, and I just need the head and I could probably sculpt or put some kind of eye piece over there. And then the rest of the body is actually the Ninja Force Storm Shadow in red, and I don't need that. So uh, fortunately, just the whole body is going to be wasted to just need his head. And then a shipwreck was the obvious choice for the torso, having the uh, blue shirt with the buttons and the collar being correct. And then um, now the Master Renegade sleeves uh, are kind of rolled up, but just a little bit. So uh, these are dock arms. And I actually noticed while sourcing these parts that uh, I didn't realize dock uses the same arms as Duke. But the dock arms were cheaper than duke arms, so dock arms. I'll just have to paint them. Uh, I don't remember whose waist piece this is anymore, and I couldn't even find the eBay listing that that one's already been removed. So sorry about that. And then the legs, I was pretty sure from the start I was going to use uh, Tripwire's legs. So these are the Tiger Force Tripwire. And uh, he has a little pistol here. I don't know if the Master Renegade has a pistol. I don't think he does. And again, the boots are the right height and the right shape, so... Uh, nice smooth, you know, these can be painted to look like pants or jeans, whatever it is he's wearing. So those are all my donor parts, and I think that should be enough, minus the cesspool arm, to get started on this project. So I'm going to have to do a lot of painting and customizing before I assemble these. So I will get started, and we'll see where that goes. Well, I've already run into my first two problems. Um, I should have remembered this, but Rikondo had a swivel head, not a uh, ball socketed head like uh, the more modern figures. I should have remembered that because Rikondo was my first G.I. Joe figure. Uh, so I'm going to have to either pick a different torso, which I don't want to do, or more likely I should be able to just hollow this out. I think I can modify these parts to fit, even if I have to glue them in place. I don't really care if the head's articulated. And Ken's going to present a problem too, because uh, I didn't remember also that Ninja Force, you know, because of their action features that they have, there's no screw in the back. So to disassemble Ken, I'm probably going to have to basically destroy the torso. I mean, I could very carefully separate it, but because they're sonic welded together and I'm not going to use the body, uh, I'll probably just destroy the torso. I, I hate to waste the figure, but it's not going to be much good without the head anyway, so we'll see what I can do with that. Okay, well, I've got a few pieces primed here with some gray primer. I misspoke earlier. I only need the, uh, the bottom part of the leg from that overkill. And the top thigh is the one from Colonel Courage. And the other leg, the left leg, will be from Colonel Courage as well. My bat arm is primed. I'm just going to leave the, the bottom part the original color because that's, that's supposed to look like metal. So I can leave it there. And I've solved these other two problems. I've got uh, the Rakondo <laughs> chest here, torso. I've dremeled this out, so I just had to remove a lot of the excess plastic here to make room for the ball of the head. And I did that using a dremel, which is a rotary tool, using uh, two attachments. I don't know if these are the best attachments, but that was able to remove most of the plastic and then the point you want to clean up the, the underside. Actually, quite a bit of plastic to remove there. But I think that'll work because now if we... Uh, yeah, so now the head fits in pretty well. Uh, again, I chose this head because the likeness, I think, is the best. And... Um, by doing it this way, we're able to preserve the articulation. He can still turn his head and kind of nod. Yep. Good job. Okay. <laughs> yes, I am happy with my torso. And it doesn't even go all the way around. So the little tabs there that prevent it from spinning all the way around still work. You know, a little bit loose, but I think it's fine. And then for Ken, yeah, I really had to cut through Ken because of you can see uh, I just I just took a, uh, a cutting blade here. I think this is a this is for plastic cutting. Is this carbide? I don't know. A uh, plastic cutting blade on the Dremel. Just cut right through the top and the bottom while holding onto it with a pair of ice grips. And I cut right into the, the mechanism. We can get a look at the mechanism in there that's supposed to have his arms uh, go up and down to do a uh, karate chop, I guess. <laughs> but that's what this little gearing system in there. And then I had to cut through his shoulder. So now that I wanted to be careful not to cut into the head, but I think that should be enough that we can break this apart. Oh, actually, it's not. I thought I could just break this by hand after cutting that much out, but, uh, oh, it's coming apart. 
Okay, I'm gonna have to cut through there to get the head out. It's and the, it's ironic that the head on Ken is a swivel side to side, which would have fit the Ricondo body and then the ball joint here. Uh, well, I guess nothing really fits this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll cut that out. Uh, sorry, I couldn't show you. I was hoping to just reveal the head here, but uh, I'll have to snap that off apart. Okay, I was able to cut that last bit of plastic with some uh, side cutters here, and I'm just going to do the same with these little tabs that are on the uh, on the neck. So, just want to get rid of those. So just nip them off here. Yeah, I might clean that up with a, a hobby knife, but. It actually does fit in the uh, shipwreck torso, even though this is designed for a ball joint. So I think, yeah, that's, that's good enough. Okay, when it's snug, I can turn a little bit. So I'll just cut that, trim that down a little bit. And then he should be able to turn his head. All right, so I'm working on the heads now. So here's the uh, last engineer head. And I've taken that brown helmet and sliced it in half and used another part of the helmet for the chin strap. So to slice it in half, I just used a hobby knife and just sat it down and pressed down on the seam and kind of cut back and forth a little bit. Eventually it actually uh, snapped in half. So the, this is the seam from the, the mold in the middle, of course. And uh, once I got partway through, it actually just popped in half. So careful if you're doing that. And then just cleaned up the edge. Yeah, I wasn't sure what to use it for the chin strap, but I thought I could just use part of the helmet. So this is the other half of the helmet. So you can see that I've taken off the, the top part to make the chin strap and just, you know, cut it into this shape and I just super glued it on there after painting. I also applied uh, the heat gun to kind of shape it a bit more. There's a bit of a gap here on the cheek so I just used the heat gun to to bend it around the chin a little more form-fittingly. Form-fittingly is that a word? And then what I'll do is I think I need to just clean up this little edge here a little bit. It's kind of hard to get this to fit around his head but uh, I'll just try to shave a little bit off here so you don't have that jog and then clean up the paint. And I may paint his eyebrows. And then for Master Renegade, uh, actually I'll show you. So I had to do a little bit of trimming. I did cut off those tabs and then I also cut a little bit of um, of the outer part because I needed to be able to rotate it inside the torso. And uh, this shape here, uh, I didn't touch, but the front part I kind of shaved off these two corners so that he could turn his head. And then for the eyepiece, I just needed something round, like a little disc, but it was actually hard to find. I thought it would be easy to cut, like, um something cylindrical and just cut the end off of it, but um, it was actually hard to find something that size. So I used a, a weapon from a transformer. I just sliced the end of the barrel off to make this ring and then super glued it on and then dropped uh, some super glue in it to flatten it out because I'm gonna have to paint the surface of this. So I'm hoping this will look okay once I've painted it. And then of course I painted the hair from blonde to uh, this light gray color. I also had to use a bit of peroxide to lighten up the face because I didn't realize how much the face had yellowed. All right, so I've got all the pieces painted now, so now we're onto the assembly phase. I thought I'd do this bit on camera. Sorry I haven't shown more of it on camera, but honestly, uh, I don't think uh, GoBots themed videos get a lot of attention, and uh, I don't imagine a lot of people are gonna be wanting to do this kind of custom. But G.I. Joe figures are easy to customize, another reason why I picked these guys. So anyway, uh, I, most of the parts that I've painted, I've spray painted a gray primer, just a Krylon, I think it is. Um, it's this color and that helps the paint adhere. I did cut a few corners though. The legs are pretty well done. The upper body and heads are pretty well done. This arm though I really did cut a corner on because I didn't prime it and the paint really does not adhere well to this uh, silver plastic here or even to the the black. I mean I'm painting on top of black. I should have known better but oh well it's good enough. Um, these uh, parts are not going to hold up to a lot of uh, movement. I don't know how people customize them so well when there's moving parts like G.I. Joe and Transformers and Marvel figures are just you know, the joints are always where the paint just scrapes off. But I'm not going to be moving these around a lot. They're pretty much just going to be statues on the shelf anyway, so I'm okay with that. Um, so let's get on with it. Uh, let's see, we've got... Um, oh, I should mention this little detail. I uh, figured out what to do with the gun. So in the cartoon, he actually has uh, just regular smooth pants. There is no holster on his leg, so, you know, this isn't the perfect set of legs to use. However, he does produce this pistol in one scene. And uh, and it looks like kind of looks like a nest zapper a little bit, but anyway, it's red with black accents on it. So I thought I'll just make that his pistol here and assume he has a holster and isn't just producing it from nowhere or somewhere we don't want to know about. So I just painted the holster uh, the same color as the pants, and then painted the the pistol of that color. And then um, oh, I should tell you also how we're going to do this. So I, I didn't get any elastics with this. These are elastic uh, O rings that I ordered from eBay. If you search for GI Joe O ring, uh, you'll probably find these and also the screws 
in case we need those, but I think we have enough screws. So if you haven't done this before, it's very easy. Just hook it on. These uh, replacement rings are thinner than the original ones. So it's easy to put on. Then I just, I just pinch them like this to push it up through the uh, waste piece and then grab the screwdriver, which you're gonna need and later and just use that to pull that up. Uh, I also put a protective clear coat on these parts. Hopefully that'll help with the uh, paint rub. I haven't done that for the torsos yet, so we'll get there. So yeah, Master Renegade will do first. He's easy to assemble. This is kind of exciting. I haven't seen them put together yet. So we'll put our dock arms in here and our head. Now the head, I guess, sorry, I should stop and talk about the head. Um, as I said, I primed and painted the uh, hair. Oh, and I also painted the eyebrows on both of them black to match the cartoon. And there's the eyepiece, which I showed earlier. And uh, I put a drop of super glue in there to fill it in and paint the middle part red, the outside black, of course. It seems to open and close the irises Aha, Iris. And Iris is open and closed in the cartoon, so it could be fully closed, it could be open, and I decided to do it open with the red dot because it's more interesting. And uh, I, it was just too small a piece to paint the um, uh, the segments of the irising mechanism. So you can see where I've cut the neck piece, like I mentioned earlier. Hopefully this is going to work. Let's see. Put the... the hard part is just holding all the parts in place while you do this. Oh, that looks pretty good. All right, so we have a back screw for him, so I'll just put it back in. Well, that was definitely the easy part. Oh, that looks good. I like it. All right, there's our master renegade. He is complete. I'm going to give him a clear coat, and we'll show him off more later. Let's assemble this guy. All right, so for um, for the last engineer, I had to do a little bit of modification here. The way the G.I. Joe legs, you know, the thigh is split in half, and then there's a pin and uh, hole here for the the bottom part of the leg. Uh, it didn't fit, so this peg is like two thicknesses, but it was too thick to fit through this hole, so I just had to sort of ream this hole a little bit. Um, I just used the hobby knife just to scrape and to cut uh, a bigger hole. And then this part, of course, just slots into this ball of a T joint here. And then we'll put this together. And we have a screw here. I think this is this. Oh, that's too small. I seem to have lost one of my screws, but that's okay. We've got a bag of them right here. I'm not sure if this is the right one. Yeah, I think they're the same. I think the back screw and the leg screws are the same. So there we go. I just wanted to be careful I don't over tighten that, but yeah, that's good. I can even bend that knee. All right. Now this is not an exact match. I used this uh, leather brown color that I had, but um, it's not, it should be lighter. It should be a lighter color. Uh, I should have gone out and bought the correct color, but uh, I guess I thought this was close enough at the time and that's what I had. I'm trying not to spend a lot of money on this project and I guess I'll put them together even though I don't have the arm. So I did find an overkill arm without the hand for uh, only four dollars and then I actually found a uh, reproduction Battle Android Trooper hand, detachable hand, which I hope fits uh, and that was also I think four dollars. So I'm hoping that that's going to work. Hopefully the hand fits the arm. Uh, I just haven't picked them up yet. I had to have them shipped to uh, to the United States, so I have to go across the border to get those. Well, I guess Last Engineer is going to get a brand new back screw. Alright, not too bad. I'll just keep that loose since I'm going to have to add the arm when it shows up. Oh, darn. Uh, I've got a problem here. Yeah, so the chin piece uh, hinders the neck movement now, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. So I'll just talk about what I've done with the head in the meantime. This was a little bit difficult. So, yeah, I got everything glued on in place here, and like I said, I heated it up and formed it and then painted it. And the hard part was the details. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do the details because these are such small parts. But for the little rectangle on his chin, I used this uh, this number one micron pen. And that worked okay. It's kind of hard to put pen on paint, but with uh, a few attempts, more than one, uh, I did manage to make that work. Now the flesh tone doesn't look like it matches here. And um, yeah, you can see for yourself there, but uh, it's it's not great. <laughs> and then I, I have this tool here for dotting, um, this is for, for painting your nails, but uh, you can dip it in paint and then put dots on. It's good for dotting eyes. So I just, I couldn't really draw. I tried drawing those uh, bolts or screws on his head but it didn't really work so I just dotted them in with black paint and the same on his chin here and um, gosh that that, uh, that chin strap's really bothering me I guess I'm gonna have to 
I guess I'm gonna have to shave it down. Anyway, that's generally what he what he should look like. Oh, the eye, yeah. So I painted his eyebrows. Um, his eye patch, I forgot he had it. His eye patch, I don't know why both of these guys are missing their left eye, but they are. So uh, his eye, it's so small, I decided not to even bother using a piece of plastic and I just sort of dropped some super glue in there and painted it black. Uh, I think it's good enough. You know, under this light, the flesh tone looks really ghoulish. It does not look warm at all. I got three different colors of flesh tone on my Master Renegade now. Anyway, let me see if I can improve these guys. Okay, that worked out pretty well. So yeah, I just had to shave a little bit off the bottom of this uh, chin strap piece and glue it back on because the glue didn't hold it very well. And I think that's good enough. And I'm going to say these are pretty much done with the exception, of course, of the arm, which is missing. Um, I want to get this video completed, and I don't know when I'm going to get to the border to pick up that arm and hand, so um, I'm just going to finish the video like this, and then if you want to see what it looks like totally complete, uh, well, now would be a good time to promote my Instagram account, so if you haven't already, uh, check me out on Instagram, please. You can find me under Transfixed or Brian V. Nichols, so I'll put some photos there once I get this completed with the arm. But I think it's good enough. Uh, I've given it a clear coat. I guess the clear coat I used has a bit of gloss to it, which is actually okay because G.I. Joe figures naturally do have a bit of that shiny plastic sheen, which I like. Uh, so I don't mind them looking a bit more, you know, toyish. I suppose the matte finish would make them look a bit more realistic, but that's okay. I don't mind them looking a little bit glossy. Now, if I had to do things differently a second time, uh, I guess I'd be a little bit more careful of paint color. I would have tried to match this brown a little bit better to the animation. I would have done a, a slightly different uh, skin tone as well because these don't quite match up with the, between the face and the uh, hands look a little bit uh, ghoulish, <laughs> too pale, I suppose. Yeah, but otherwise I'm happy with the... Uh, well, very happy with Master Renegade, how he turned out. I think the, I think the part choice was good. I, I like how the little pistol turned out and just him in general and I'm glad that um, Last Engineer turned out okay as well. This was more complicated in terms of parts and uh, of course having to do custom pieces for the head. I wasn't sure if I was going to have the skill to pull off the helmet cyborg pieces. Um, I think it's okay. Uh, and again, I could have done this shoulder a little bit better and, and primed this a little bit better but you know what? It's good enough. Uh, considering that these are just obscure GoBots characters that only appeared in about two episodes of the cartoon, I believe. So, anyway, that's pretty much it. I hope that this entertained you a little bit, uh, maybe gave you some ideas. But uh, yeah, that was just a fun little project. I like doing things like this. It's, it's mostly just for myself, and I just wanted to make a video just to share it in case anybody was interested. If there's any GoBots fans out there, or if you remember these characters or are interested in the show, uh, let me know. I don't know if uh, I don't know if GoBots gets a lot of. Uh, love these days but uh it's a pretty fun show it's i think it's charming it still holds up okay if you're looking for something just kind of fun to watch they're fun little toys to collect and it's a fun cartoon and uh, this was a fun little project to do so thanks for joining me and watching this all right thanks for wait who are you where did you come from the future where i come from it is tuesday we've been to the border to bring you this come with me if you want your arm to live <laughs>